They're off. We're always going to have a fringe that just says, I'm not doing anything and I want to collect money uh, as good Christians or uh, religious people and just a, as good human beings. In spite of themselves, we're probably going to, we should take care of them and their children in particular. Uh, for those voters in the district who are uh, reading reports or hearing about over the backyard fence, things about, for instance, this uh, Mr. Jay Kilheny, yeah. who has said you assisted to have his cocaine dealing conviction erased. Can you explain that situation for voters to understand? It's not true. Okay, again, this is how desperate Carney and his people are. Going back to my record as a, as a district attorney, I left the district attorney's office with distinction. I left the U.S. Attorney's Office with distinction and more honors than I can carry in 10 boxes. I put away drug dealers and murderers, organized crime, white collar criminals, child pedophiles. I put away terrorists from the Middle District. My character speaks for itself and I'll match it up against Chris Carney's any day of the week. And that's the kind of desire and the ambition and ethics that I want to take to Washington. People don't want to hear about that stuff. You took the poll. If that stuff was, if uh, that was working, I would be behind in the polls. But uh, my opponent has spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on what is their tactic? This is the Democrats' tactic. We can't run on our Pelosi, Obama, Carney record, who voted for the health care bill and said he wasn't going to, cut seniors by 550 billion voted for uh, the bailout and the stimulus that the president says it's even working now, and voted to expand, put that word in there, expand the TARP, but wouldn't support calling in the TARP money to reduce the deficit. Okay. So people want to know, what are you going to do to get me a job? What are you going to do to lower my taxes? And what are you going to do to cut the deficit? That's what they're concerned about. They're not concerned about anything else, and I'm staying focused on the issues. And uh, I may not look like I know exactly what's going on according to the pictures that Mr. Carney puts up, but uh, I've got a little moxie, I've got common sense, and I know what the people want, and I'm doing exactly what they want. So you're saying their campaign looked at your entire record, they found one particular case, and now they're just exploiting that case? That yes, case? exactly. Do you want to for the voters explain your decision making process in that case? I have explained that when I'm out and people ask me about it and I explained it to the public and they say move on. And I'm not saying that this is the case here, but I've uh, been caught up once or twice where I've made a statement and the reporter uh, obviously wasn't listening to me and I just do not trust uh, some reporters. This will be on tape, so this is, you won't get it wrong. Yeah, no, that's, uh, I'm staying focused on the issues and I'm, I'm not following down that road where they want me to get off. He wants me to get off his voting record with uh, Pelosi and Obama and I'm not going to do it. Um, one other thing that's been out there, uh, and I want to give you an opportunity to address it, uh, is when you were U.S. Attorney, did you or did you not get some sort of permission, written or otherwise, from supervisors to write a letter of reference for businessman Louis to Naples? Uh, when he was Once again, lies, but I'm not going to give anybody uh, headlines to get off the issues. The people want, where are my jobs? Voni, Cardi told me he was voting for, not going to vote for the health care, and he did. The people don't care about that stuff. My record speaks for itself. I was vetted by the FBI. If they didn't find anything in my background, then there is nothing there. And I've had agents say to me, Tom, you have one of the cleanest records that we've ever vetted. Now, have we all done something in the past that we really uh, wish we could do over? I don't think there's anybody sitting at this table that hasn't been in one of those positions. But I have done nothing illegal or unethical. What you see is what you get. Have your statements on that particular issue shifted over time? No. I don't want to address it more. I'm, I'm essentially, I'm asking you, to, I'm giving you the opportunity to address the issue if you'd like it, if you don't mind. I've addressed the issue, and I'm focusing on what the people of this district want. They want a candidate that they can trust, and by the looks of things, uh, uh, there's a, a great deal of trust out there for me. Other questions from the group? Can, right can, you, can you 
and I don't know if it goes to the same line of questioning Mark was just in, but can you detail your business relationship and personal relationship with Lewis de Naples? My relationship with Lewis de Naples is not the issue. The issue are, are, are jobs <coughs> and taxes. This isn't about him. This is about this country getting on the right track, a democracy. Other questions from the group? Yeah, moving in a different direction. Um, you just said getting on the right track. In, uh, Washington, uh, I don't think anyone could argue that in recent years, has become increasingly polarized. Uh, that you have uh, extremes on, on, on both sides. You know, your own party has been accused of being the, the party of no. Sure. Um, in that vein, in that vein, uh, John Boehner uh, recently, with regard to the expiring tax cuts, offered up a compromise uh, that the Democrats want that renew the tax cuts, mm -hmm. except the top, I don't know the exact number of percent, the top 5% of, of, of wage earners, not to extend those. Uh, if, you are, if you are in Congress, would you, have, would you have agreed with that compromise or no? No. I would not have agreed with that compromise. Because, and let me tell you why. Sure. The top 2% of the taxpayers pay between, I think it's 30 and 40% of the taxes in the country. Uh, in fact, I don't know if it's most people, but a very, very large number of people do not pay the taxes. And that's fine with me. If I make an X amount of dollars and am making more, a lot more than this person, then I'll pay my share. But you have to, we have to realize this. Those top wage earners or entrepreneurs are the ones that create jobs for the most part uh, or they invest their money into institutions that will lend that money to create jobs for middle and small business owners so if we hamper that top two percent they're not going to invest that money with us. They're not going to expand their factories or build factories or lend their money for someone who wants to start a business. So I don't support any tax increase on anybody at this point. We're too far in the hole to start saying, well, this one should pay more or that one should pay more. Let's get out of the hole first and then revisit. If elected, uh, I'm wondering as a freshman, you, you, you get down there and everything's got to be pretty confusing, I would assume. With whom would you seek counsel, solicit for guidance, get advice? Are there people that you turn to who've been in Washington before or just in general, you appreciate their advice? I will listen to anybody that wants to uh, talk to me or give me advice. I will uh, digest it synthesize it and uh, I'll look to my faith I'll look to my experience and uh, I will learn and then I will make a decision I'm not one that follows polls and says well what do the people think about this or what does this person think about it although the people in the district will have the opportunity as I said earlier to know where I'm leaning and where I'm going to go and maybe they can change my mind because of something that I didn't think of. But that responsibility uh, hopefully will be with me. And I've been down in Washington getting my tires kicked a couple of times and uh, you know I'm a, I'm a strict con uh, con uh, constitutionalist and so somebody in, in a meeting they were going to say it's a good Republican that will vote with us all the time. And I politely said I'm a good conservative Republican I'll vote with the Republicans when it is good for the country and good for the district. Uh, I've been threatened by drug dealers and murderers. They didn't intimidate me. Uh, Washington is not going to intimidate me. I will vote with my conscience and what's best for the country and my district, and the people will know about it. I will, be, uh, I will not be a grandstander. My father so, told me a long time ago, keep your mouth shut, keep your ears open, and it's paid off for me thus far. And uh, I'll do what I believe is right, and I'll be a gentleman about it. Uh, I, will, I will be firm, but I will treat people the way that I want to be treated. Any other questions from the group at this point?
Yeah, I mean, I know you're not answering those questions, but do you not think that ethics, integrity, honesty, openness, you, you talked about being an open person, that does not play a role in the candidates? Sure it does. But uh, uh, not when it's lies that are spewed. And uh, as I said, I'm out on the uh, stump. I'm talking to thousands and thousands of people. And individually in a group, they come up and ask me, and I talk to them. And that's the way I'm going to continue to do this. Uh, well, Tom, if you'll, you'll answer the question to the people out, outside, but you won't answer for us. Right. You're playing. Can we do it outside? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're playing into Chris Carney's advertisements are continually, what's he hiding? And I think everybody that watches his video, that sticks in their head after this and say, he's not answering the question. No, what's not, he <coughs> nothing. I'm hiding nothing. Well, answer. I, I, I'm hiding nothing and I'm staying focused on the issues and I'm not going to get drugged down that, uh, down that alley because uh, the people do not want it. And that will be the headlines, not the issues. I, I'm a voter in that district. I, I want to know. I just, I just want to know. Well, you have to decide. Are you going to believe what they are saying, or are you going to look at my record? Your answer would help me. I don't believe what they're saying because it's not true. Okay? There's, there's no, nothing to explain there. It's just, uh, it's not true. But what's wrong in giving some details? Because I'm not going down that road. I think the candidates need yeah. his position on it. And it's, uh, we don't want to belabor it. We probably already have. <laughs> uh, are there any other questions on other topics? Can you talk about, go back to Afghanistan. Is there a point where it gets, that we're there too long? Is this, I know you said that you want to see some progress. What What's your definition of five years from now, 10 years, 15? I, I don't put a time factor on it. I put uh, my reliance on the people on the ground. Your, um, your national security education background knowledge. Uh, Chris Carney was here yesterday talking about a lot of stuff that you know is predator reaper missions. He's been on the border. He sits on the Homeland Security Commission. Yeah. He said he's interrogated people at, at Guantanamo Bay. Um, do you bring anything from a national security standpoint? to the table that can replace that? Uh, first of all, I think a, a lot of things are confidential that you don't bring to, to the public's attention. But yes, I do. I prosecuted terrorists. I was on the Attorney General's uh, advisory board. Uh, uh, I was uh, the first U.S. attorney to be invited to and took part at uh, the Carlisle War College on uh, foreign affairs and, and uh, uh, international issues. I have a strong background uh, education-wise. I have a strong background uh, experience-wise. Uh, how many members of Congress have prosecuted a terrorist? Like I have. Like my office has, that uh, I've supervised. Okay, I think that takes care of the questions that we have. Andrew might have a few more that uh, a reporter uh, typically sticks around a little bit afterwards to ask some follow-up questions. Sure. Uh, but wanted to give you an opportunity. Is there anything that we didn't ask that you particularly wanted to, uh, an opportunity to talk about, or is there any essentially closing statement that you wanted to? No, I think I made my closing statement a little bit ago, and I don't want to bore you with that again. But I do thank you for uh, having me here, and I thank you for uh, the questions. You have a right to ask me every single question that you ask me. And I've answered the questions honestly, and I'm not deviating from that. Uh, my father told me that there were two important things in life. Uh, you leave two legacies, your children and your reputation. And my reputation speaks for itself, from what I did for 18 years for the people of uh, not only Lycoming County and the Middle District, but for the country. And I will take that to Washington. That I promise. We appreciate the conversation this morning. You bet. It's a pleasure.